This feels like plastic. If you like pretty plastic, Kyocera Opal is exactly what you need. I mean, it's pretty darn impressive. Get away from that mold. And I don't mean mold as in fungus. I don't recommend being involved in the plastics industry unless you like cancer. Blow water into my face, but I generally don't like it. If I sound like an alien, I'm not saying that I'm not an alien. That was fun. If you see it in the video, you'll say, wow, I saw, I saw that in the video. Oh, you waste too much opal. Are you still gonna say that when I've wasted too much plastic? I'm just, I'm not gonna show it in the video. I, I, I can't be humiliated like that. Looks pretty from the outside, but it's still plastic. Today's video is about synthetic opal. What is synthetic opal? We will go over the types of synthetic opal, how to tell real opal from synthetic, and we're also going to cut an opal cabochon out of synthetic opal. These terms come up, imitation opal, synthetic opal, opal simulant. What do they mean? Well, they all basically mean that it's fake opal. But it's out there. So this is the first one uh, of synthetic opal that uh, was around in 1971. A guy named John Slocum invented this where there are bits of colored material some sort of foil or something embedded in glass. He thought he owned the world at that point, but in 1974, Pierre Gilson invented synthetic opal that's really based on the structure of real opal. And you see, Gilson was a scientist, and Slocum, well, he was kind of uh, a Cub Scout. If you look at the structure of real opal, it consists of a lattice work of regularly spaced silica spheres, which, uh, because of their regular spacing, refract light and separate colors one from the other. If you look at common opal or potch, there's no such arrangement, so what reflects is just white or black or whatever. In about the year 2010, the Kyocera company uh, invented simulated opal, which is very much like the, uh, the Gilson opal, except it's uh, the process of building the, the opa, opal, the silica, occurs within a, a resin base, a sort of a plastic base. Here's a group of uh, colors you can choose from, and here's another group. I'm not sure uh, if these are still active or not, but they come in designer colors. And if you want to, they make opal nail polish, which is certainly beautiful and quite attractive. And I think I'm gonna have it done right after this video. So other types of fake opal is one called Monarch and then there's Aurora. But let's get to the original types. This is Gilson Opal, a, a, a piece that I bought several years ago. This stuff is relatively expensive. Um, it uh, cost about $300 an ounce. I didn't buy nearly that much. It, uh, it has good color. It has a slight orange look, and that's because the background, uh, the, which should be clear, is actually black. I actually bought another piece of Gilson Opal that I thought was much better looking and this is it and I made an arrowhead out of it and I have to say I mean <laughs> it's pretty darn impressive for an opal arrowhead but uh, this is a very beautiful piece of of synthetic opal uh, made by the Kyocera company you may be familiar with them they make uh, lots of things not not just synthetic opal. I'm sure you're familiar with their products like their auto parts. I use them. Their cell phones. Who doesn't use them? Solar panels. One in every house. And of course, ceramic knives. Actually, I do use these. This is meant to look like real opal and it looks like better than the best opal that you can find. I actually paid, I bought a marble made of this, and it was actually kind of expensive. Uh, it was like $140 for this small piece. 
I think it's very beautiful and I wanted to see it for myself. <laughs> I cut it in half, but uh, I must have polished the back because but the, the surface of the marble was was polished when I received it. And I'm sure that somebody just is in this, the synthetic uh, uh, opal marble business. Or this, this probably was a bead, probably for the beading people. It's quite a spectacular bead, though. There's no getting around it. Uh, this, they attempted to, to make real opal. They have the, the, the lines we, we see in uh, some types of opal, that almost the finger-like processes that you can see in, in uh, Ethiopian opal. But we also see that in Australian opal. In, in a video I did recently on gem matrix opal, there were areas like this. And when you went to the surface, the, the, these long lines became dots. So if you like pretty plastic, uh, I think Kyocera Opal is exactly what you what you need. I obtained a piece of Aurora Opal and that's what I'm going to work with today. This large chunk of, I don't know, it was like 140 grams. It's about $140 for this. Um, I'm going to go over to the saw and saw the edge off uh, and get away from that mold uh, and I don't mean mold as in fungus I mean, I mean the the actual mold that this was made in and uh, cut a slice off then cut another slice and uh, make a cabochon I hate cutting plastic uh, some um, turquoise is uh, stabilized, stabilized with uh, with plastic resin, and it stinks like hell. And I'm sure that it's uh, a carcinogen. It's uh, it's not good for your body. And I don't recommend uh, being involved in the plastics industry unless you like cancer. And even if you like cancer, I don't think you want it for yourself. So I'm going to cut this off with, uh, I'm going to use my mask. I, I, I think cutting plastic is dangerous. So this is my trim saw and I've removed this wobbly blade that I've been working with in the past few videos. I, I thought this was one of my more expensive ones, but this is actually uh, like a $5 blade. And I'm going to put on, it's, this thing is, uh, 0.006 inches thick. I'm sure this is really interesting to most of you. Okay, so now it's tight. Except I need to put the the cover back on, or it will it will blow uh, water into my face, which I generally don't like it. And if it, if I sound like an alien. I'm not saying that I'm not an alien. That was fun. I don't know. This is a cut piece. This is what I'm going to cut the cabochon out of. It's like a left part of the outer part on there. So, uh, this, uh, if you see it in the video, you say, wow, I saw, it. I saw that in the video. But if you don't see it in the video, uh, you're not missing too much. What I'm going to do is take a template like this one. Everybody's telling me, oh, you waste too much opal. Well, are you still going to say that when I've wasted too much plastic? <laughs> well, sorry to sound so diabolical. I mean, it's not that I'm not diabolical. It's just that I didn't want to sound diabolical. So live from Pulitzer Opal, 
the cutting of the Aurora synthetic plastic opal. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. First I'm going to shape the, the outside of it. See, look, I've got a, a piece of the edge stuck on my finger. So I'm going to show all the uh, stages of uh, cutting a cabochon. You first, uh, I've, I've shown this in previous videos, but first we're going to take the edge around at an angle about like, like that. Once we get that, then we're going to make the angle lower and we're going to have a central flat area which will get progressively smaller and smaller. Looks pretty from the outside, but it's still plastic. And there you have it, uh, plastic opal. Ready, ready to, ready to be set in, in a jewelry setting near you. Maybe a plastic jewelry setting. You know, I think that I've been kind of harsh on these synthetic opal people. All they really want to do is earn a living, and make some money. So, you know, more power to them. And and, and most people don't want to pay the prices of of real opal. So, if you want uh, an opal look like well get one of the other synthetic opals this aurora uh, doesn't doesn't look at all like op like real opal but it is uh it sort of has that opal play of color and uh is beautiful in its own right so uh, take it from me <laughs> insert whatever you'd like here i don't, I don't have any real advice it's Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.